Hello there. Seraphim from 17 once again. This is my Dark Souls 3 walkthrough. We're going to be toppling the Cathedral of the Deep, the Deacons of the Deep, and Rosaria's Fingers. And we're going to be toppling all of these things in about 13 minutes, apparently, which is seems quite short, doesn't it? But I guess we'll see what I do. I'm also going to kill the Berserk creature. So if you can get him to spawn, you can hit him in the face a few times when he taunts, stun him, visceral, dead. Just be careful here, if you do not kill him with the counter-attack, he will do a crazy this. And if you go near it, it will knock you down. It's FromSoft's way of punishing players who try to punish weakness. We are so programmed in these video games to chase down an enemy that's been knocked down to get the positional advantage and do some extra damage. So that creature has a move to counter that mentality. It's very clever, it's quite hilarious, but it's also rather deadly. So now you know it exists, never get hit by it, always punish it accordingly. But we're going to the cathedral, so I'm going to look into the enemy section again, guys, and I'm going to give you a heads up on some of the stuff you're going to find here. Uh, if I can find it. But this is an interesting zone. I really like the Cathedral of the Deep. I just didn't realise it was going to be called that. Because when people kept speaking about a cathedral, this just wasn't what I had in mind. But here we go. Tons of enemies here. We've already talked about the Devouts and the Devout Bombers who turn into the crazy ones. We've talked about the Corpse Grubs and the Grave Wardens. Let's talk about some of the people we haven't, like the Knight of the Deep. Guy with the Great Mace and the guy with the Great Two-Handed Sword. This guy is a beast. Apparently he's weak to poison and toxic and bleed, but you wouldn't know because nobody uses that against that creature. He has 556 HP. Oh, by the way, do not kill these zombies. There's no point. They keep on coming back and they barely give any reward. It's kind of a waste of time. What else have we got here? Writhing Rotting Flesh. Yeah, Writhing Rotting Flesh is those little... Um, the dudes from the, the depths. Those stupid blobs. That's all that creature is. We've got giant slaves, mangrubs, and deep accursed. The deep accursed is that crazy spider dog thing that guards the ring. There's the bone dust. Make sure you pick that up. And apparently, the guy has 800 life, drops that ring, and he's has no weakness, no weakness at all. Also here, guys, if you have the friendly giant, he's going to support you with his arrows and it enables you to pick all this stuff up at your leisure. Be careful of those creatures that have transformed. They can cast bleed on you by getting leeches on you, and you have to use the uh, blood moss to get them off, or move into a fire. If there's any fire nearby, step in it, and it should fix your problem. Then we have the Cathedral Evangelist. Um, but there's no picture. I assume he is one of those deacon people. Or maybe, no, it's the spiked mace lady. It's the evangelists from the undead settlement who's up in that one room in the cathedral. So she's got 830 life. She's weak to thrust. She's pretty much the same as she was before. And aside from that, there's really not too many more different ones. Of course, there's the deacons and the, and the, the giant. Let's look at the giant. The giant has 1,873 life. He drops 4,000 souls. He drops large titanite shard and dung pies, and he has no weakness. The Deacon of the Deep has 292 life. Get that. That must be the standard one, not the boss. The Archdrake Deacon Royce has 4,000 life. And he's weak to physical attacks. So, pretty standard stuff really, nothing too exotic. Ah, uh, what I was trying to do there for the people who... Um, understand bleeding Dark Souls 1 I was trying to use the extended iframes in the dagger dodge to iframe through the damage from the bleed but as you noticed I don't think I ever timed it correctly or I just didn't time it or it doesn't work I should say because the bleed meter is going to keep going up and I just got Lloyd's talismans there so be very careful that means you cannot heal if you ever see this cloud on your body, if you use your Estus Flask you're giving the game an opportunity to deal damage to you so be very careful this is my path through these particular rafters. It's unconventional and it's not the one that a lot of people use, but it's the one that I've always kind of done and I enjoy it. I'm going to use Spook again and then I'm going to jump from this roof, bounce off the balcony and land where the grave uh, wardens are. There you go. Simple stuff. And now we can run to the elevator and get to that first shortcut. Be aware, the two grave ladies here are incredibly aggressive and they will aggro and chase you to the depths of hell. You can do what the speedrunners do, where when you open this door, if you quit out, it'll reset all the all the patterns of the enemies. But I don't do that, because I just don't see the point. I'm not looking for a really good score. And if I die, I just record it again, you know what I mean? 
Simple stuff. Do you know what I mean? But run down here. You should know this area if you've been in this place before. There's going to be two guys in this room with candlesticks. Uh, actually, three guys. They're not the most agile enemies and they're not the biggest threats. They enable you to get to this lift, hit the lift, and then we can open the door back to the bonfire. Once you've done that, the biggest, most arduous measure of the journey through this place is done because you now have a shortcut, which is what makes the level design inside this cathedral so enjoyable because uh, it's not too bad at all. But open this doorway and boom, shortcut unlocked. A couple of things to note in this area. There is some sludge that makes you immobile, so packing a dagger is a really good idea. There are a, there's an NPC invasion by Kirk from the first Dark Souls, and if you kill him, you can get his armor from the bedside chamber of Rosario, which I'm going to be showing you later on in this video. Lots of little things to find. The rafters, an area I didn't go to in my blind playthrough, which I found after about five or six playthroughs. Pretty fancy the amount of stuff that they hide away just because you miss a ladder, so it's always best to take your time and explore. Be wary of the giant here, he's a bit of a dick. There's also a, a really good ring you can pick up, which is the All Father Lloyd attack ring, which gives you a bonus 10% damage when you're at full life. And if you're a player who's really good at not taking damage, or you're a guy who always stays topped up, that 10% can really help. But I dropped down here after picking up the ring. This is me trying to spam a, a skill for a weapon I haven't two-handed, because I'm a genius. And then the frame rate's going to go into the toilet, because we're on Xbox One. So enjoy the frame pacing issues, and we're going to get evaded just as we get to the central part of this arena. The giant should give up chase after a while, but he comes really close on this particular journey. Yeah, the pacing's really bad in this area. But here's the second giant. This one's the trickier one, because there's those crazy blobs in this area that you can clip on. You can clip on this guy's foot if he's being a dick, and additionally, if you get unlucky, he can hit you through the geometry because he has some kind of questioning swipes, but... That is a very quick way of getting to the boss. I'll take the dagger off so we don't have any wasted weight. I keep the Cestus on just because every so often I do fancy a parry. And I do believe you can parry the Deacon. Uh, I just don't really do it. Sometimes I backstab by accident, but it's usually best to hit him with a couple of strikes. And the key to fighting Deacons convincingly is alluring skulls. Alluring skulls will make them follow for a few seconds wherever you throw the skull. If you have enough skulls, you can keep them 100% of the time off of you. They will never bother you, you will never get hit by bullshit, you can just have your way with their leader and that's exactly what you're going to see me do here. So I try and throw a skull and I get hit by fire, throw the skull, get it out there and everybody's going to go that way so now we can come in here and chop dudes up. The skulls last give or take about 5 to 10 seconds if you're lucky. I don't know the exact time on them, I've never timed it, but it's around 5 plus seconds. So just throw them liberally, keep them in control and thin their herd. If you've got a fast weapon, and a, a powerful weapon like the one we're using, you can cut these guys down in no time at all. Just be aware that they love to hit you with those fireballs just as you're about to chuck your skulls. And a lot of the times it can cancel animation, so be careful. Here comes the, the, the MVP himself, Pope Big Daddy G. This is the guy you want to be wrecking. Do all your damage to him, bleed him, chuck the skulls, just, and he whacks me with a staff. The Pope just put his staff on my face. Sexual harassment. There's the, the butt stab, that's what you get, Pope. And then the fight's pretty much over, but I chuck another one down just to show how powerful they are, and see you later, pal. Very simple fight, but it can escalate very quickly, especially on New Game Plus cycles. Swap your rings, get as many souls as you can, and now we're going to be going from this bonfire to Rosaria's Fingers. Which, funny story, which is not actually that funny, but I'm using it as a side tangent, I got to Rosaria's Fingers on my blind playthrough by complete accident because of patches. When it came to finding it by choice, I could not figure out how to get to it. And it turned out I had to go up to those r roof rafters that I'd never found. So I ended up watching a guy on YouTube show me how to get to him because I couldn't get to him. And then he climbed a ladder I'd never seen before. And it was just that moment of, Jesus, there's something in this game that I missed. And I thought I did almost everything. So, moral of the story, guys. You might think you know everything. Frame pacing shits the bed there. But sometimes you don't, so it's always good to, you know, be humbled by information to increase your amount of knowledge and get smacked by a giant greatsword. Thanks a bunch, buddy. He's going to chase as well. He's very eager. But he's going to drop down and test his knees, is he not? No? No, he didn't. Anywho, 
back over here and we're going to be going down one of these annals that leads towards Rose area. But first we have to unlock the shortcut. This is a shortcut a lot of people will unlock for the purposes of fighting the deacons if you're not too confident with that fight or you don't have the damage to put them down quickly. But this is also where you get to the rooftops. So there's a doorway to my right just here. I think I'm going to open the shortcut just in case I die because I'm usually a thorough player like that. Yeah, I did. Always good to do that, folks. Even the best player in the world on these games can fall off, can get knocked off, can have a bad pattern, can get bummed. It's just what Souls games breed. You know, There are always those moments where something really strange happens and you've never seen it happen that way before. Especially if you're live streaming. If you're live streaming, Souls games do everything they can to fuck you up. But the secret ladders to the left here never even noticed you could come around here and then up here leads to the rooftops. Up here is a lot of strong enemies. There are those huge skeleton dudes with the halberds and the great axes, and now they're wearing fancy robes, so they've upgraded their fashion and potentially their statistics as well, so be careful of those guys. Additionally, there are those hollow slaves, who I call thieves, and then there is these dudes up here, the cathedral knights with crossbows and shit, and this place is not very good when it comes to frame pacing either. So be very careful. Be careful of this guy. Normally he'll kill himself, but sometimes he doesn't. And then down here is the drop to... Ro Look at that. Look at that! Oh my god, you can't tell the difference, guys. 60 frames per second. Ugh. So bad. There's one of those weird grub guys who fires magic spells. And here's the lever that leads us to... Uh, to where we need to be. Which is awesome. Opening up shortcuts, getting shit done. But this is a very strange area, this. I'm curious as to, to what all the lore is on this particular sequence. Because apparently all these people have been turned into slugs. And he has a red soap sign for some reason. So he used to be an invader but now he's a slug. And then there's the, the Hensel guy. The yellow finger dude. Who's essentially just the uh, Xanthus crown guy. Who turns into a grub as well. Like lots of grubs and shit. Are they slurm queens or something? Did they all drink too much slurm? Very strange. But here is some kind of weird nursery. Full of cots. Really. Just very macabre. And there is Rosaria, so you can go up to her, you can join the fingers if you should want to, or you can just get out of here. But uh, If you pledge allegiance to this covenant, you will piss off Ceres. She will not want anything to do with you, and you'll have to do it in New Game Plus. So do not take this covenant lightly. You are now the sworn enemy of the, the Dark Moons, and it, it means, it matters something, you know. It means something, I should say. But we're going to go back to the Nexus and get some shit done. And then in the next video, we're probably going to be taking on Irithyll. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And as always, you take care now.